Death Prophet Terror Blade combo is almost unbeatable in team fights. Like you can't fight into exorcism and metamorphosis in mid game. It's just too much damage. It's not possible to fight into. Your Phoenix egg on top of that. No chance. Fnatic, Fnatic don't want that uh, Arc Warden to come out. They don't want to go to yeah. that extreme late, late game. But how... I'm curious for the draw range into Death Prophet matchup for late game, like around team fighting. How did they sort of go against each other? Uh, it's pretty decent. It's not yeah. the best, because now Death Prophet can be built into like Blink, even overwhelming Blink. You can get on top of him. But in this mid game, it's very hard for DP to play against Raw Ranger. As for yeah, TNC, I feel like they are going to be forced into a carry that's just not like I. I it's similar. It kind of reminds me of game two, where it feels like you know draft wise, Fnatic seem to have a slight edge, but TNC just find ways to play their draft so well. I don't. Mm -hmm. I feel like they may just have to say we can't get an egg hater. Let's just if they use supernova, we just disengage. Same th these yep. three ultimates: exorcism, supernova, metamorphosis. Run the hell away and then fight them when they're down. That that to me is TNC's best option. This series as well, they've been showing a lot more of that restraint to be able to make the calls of when they don't want to engage, when they don't want to keep pushing, when they think they might be overextending. They've shown it in those, these two games, so I think that is going to be the way that they end up going. It's something that's been working for them. It's won them the first two games. They know they have that communication in the team. But you're not going to see yeah. the Drow Ranger get picked Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, all the heroes I like are getting banned out. What a shame. I just hope we don't see a Rave King. I feel like if they pick Rave King, this game is just almost all the loss on draft. Yeah. Which a lot of people have been falling them. back to. They want to play Siren. something, something fast-paced that can punish these long cooldowns, I feel. Also, like as we saw last game, something that ideally takes Roche. Like, I wouldn't mind just like an Ursa again. That, that... Look, gods. You say disengage. I say Naga Siren. We're on the same page here. Yeah. It's not I mean... like a go-to for Gabby, but it's... <laughs> Doable. Yeah, potentially. Okay, what other heroes does he really like, though? I think the Drow is out. Juggernaut potentially matches up terribly against DP and TB, though. What else is the Morphling? Could work, yeah. but against the Lion Phoenix? How mm. much of TNC's draft right now is really Roche orientated, right? Because maybe that's just not what they're going to go for this game. Like zero? Yeah, but so maybe they yeah, are going to be focusing no Roche at all. on that team fight the disengage aspect a lot more so black by the way the last time gabby played naga siren was 12 months ago okay <laughs> probably not gonna be seeing it then especially not against the pangolier yeah ooh, 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 ooh. this looks like a very solid draft what do you got tnc i feel like you gotta go something like a morphling there's something that can snowball really hard and carry you I like more for Ursa. I think those are the two that, that stand out to me most. But nah, Ursa it's just a tough pretty scary to against these heroes. We've seen Morphling before. Yeah, many times actually. Hasn't been popular yeah. in this qualifier, but historically a very good qualifier hero. What about Medusa? No. Nah. Too slow. Could work though. <laughs> Would give a lot of team fight. And you have Shaman to push towers. TNC are definitely pushing the timer for this choice. They are going to go that Good call, Black. Good call. They just had nothing nothing better. It's not a hero that has been a go-to. But at the same time, Gabby did make PA work, so he's going to try to do the same for the Morphling here. Yep. And lame-wise, <laughs> I, I do like this a lot against the, the Pengo. It's good, for sure. But both games, we've seen this last pick not be like the best optimal hero that could have had it's already countered by the lion and the matchup generally is not easy but they they made it work last game and gabby is obviously a very confident player you can see it in his play style and morphling is a hero that if he gets off to a good start he can just snowball these games completely out of control which team do you favor than black and that's not just draft based but i guess having that knowledge of how they've been playing in this series so far too I gotta go with Fnatic again this game. I think their draft is just a little bit too solid. It's all on Gabby, really. Which, yep. can, he do, can he do it a second time in a row? That's my question. <laughs> well, what do you think, guys? Do you think it's possible for him to pull it through a second time in a row? Yeah, I, I definitely do. I think what we've seen from Fnatic is they're just not playing their A game here. Um, you know, the pressure of maybe getting a TI seems to be affecting them. I, similar to Black, favor Fnatic's draft. But unlike him, I, I think TNC 
They, it feels like there's this magic about them where they're just making these drafts work and Fnatic just is not playing with the same amount of confidence that they have, as they have in the past. Yeah. yeah, they seem to have almost more pocket picks, things that Fnatic aren't expecting, things that they think they should be able to beat them on. They have the confidence in the early game of having that knowledge. Then when they transition to this middle game, I don't know, it just feels like TNC almost have more direction. They know how to play what they've picked. I think I am going to side with Fnatic here, though. It does look kind of difficult to come up against. So that's where I'm going to be putting my prediction. But I'm very excited to jump in to game number three of the grand final. Take it away, guys. Game three, back against the wall. Fnatic, can they do it? These are players, a few of whom have had a long storied history career. The likes of DJ as well as Jabs, Raven as well. These guys have played at numerous TIs. Had quite a bit of success at TI as well, but they are facing elimination here, Black. Yep, on the verge. Not where I thought they would be after yesterday, where they gave TNC a lot of problems. But today, TNC just seems to be, you know, on a different sort of level. Like, they had a better breakfast, maybe, or lunch. Not sure. The, the series against Boom was more than a good warm-up. It was a very close series, so maybe that's helping them a little bit, because they came in already warmed up but yeah they're making it work a little bit scared for them this time around with the draft but i was th the same in the last game so see if they make it work again i i am enjoying the two teams having a little banter back and forth about the tipping yeah. and not bullying each other obviously good friends and also rivals as soon as they're in game but friends outside of the game so yeah. I mean, even last game we saw some all chatting when the Centaur stormed, right? They were <laughs> yeah. happy spirits, all of them. I'm, I'm sure TNC was a little bit mad about it, but they, they could still joke about it. <laughs> exactly. Still the tips going out, or even getting a few himself. Jabs was once asking them to, you know, stop tipping him. But nothing too crazy coming out to start this game off. It will be Lion in the four position role, Phoenix in the five. That's something, you know, I guess there is sometimes some switch arounds with the line and even the Phoenix, but yeah, here we go. It's, it's going to be a, a very different game than we've seen before. Like the playmaking is not very obvious for TNC. That they got to preemptively split and then run him with like a brewmaster, try to cyclone someone, get a stun off until this shadow shaman gets a blink, which should be at like 15 minutes or so. It's going to be difficult to play the map for TNC until then. Shaman, we haven't seen this here at all. Uh, coming kind of out of nowhere, what can, what can we expect from Shaman? I mean, they just picked it as a Lion replacement, right? I'm sure if there was Lion, they would have picked that instead. But they just had a severe lack of Disable. And that's pretty much the best option you can go to. Like, if you look at the post for hero pool, there's really nothing better than Lion and Shaman when it comes to just disabling heroes and enabling your own heroes to deal damage to them. Yeah, Hero that used to be the go-to, maybe like more the Earth Spirit has kind of fallen to the wayside. Not the, the go-to for anymore. Otherwise, you know, Tim's an Earth Spirit specialist. He'd be loving that hero, but <laughs> we need these ranged supports. Yep, mid lane this time around. No, not reverse rolls. Armel was last last game too, right? No, no, no. no Armel was, was the VP. So yeah, yeah. They, they swapped. <laughs> Swap mid heroes. So last time this mid matchup was pretty even overall. Uh, so far, Ormel having a bit of a sizable edge. Yeah, at least only for missed the first couple of minutes. So yeah, and uh, good four denies up to his hands as well. So good start for the less track. Armel, you know, perhaps punishing the newly returned mid laner. Chuan obviously initially a mid lane when it was a master, coming back from the off lane a little bit maybe inexperienced when it comes to the, the mid lane as of late. And bottom lane, a lot of harass coming down. Fnatic were the ones playing aggressive, but they just they get zapped back. Yeah, the Cinder Brew plus Clap plus the Shaman Shock is a lot of single target damage, which Terrorblade is very afraid of in the laning phase. He's sitting at 300 health right now, has to be careful. They're out of region down here. But both Koreas are coming with more region. They should be Cinder Brew slow. Gets the ignite on oh, him Tims? as well. Tim's gets stove on. DJ's going for the kill. The fire spirits come back up now. Just as he dives in. So DJ timed this one for this aggression. Has he got the damage to follow this up? One or two more right one clicks. More? Doesn't get it though. 
He threw the fire spirits at Bok as well, which meant he didn't have a third one to throw. Yeah, my number one fire spirits really just don't deal any damage. They slow your attack speed by a ton, but yeah, the damage just comes in from like level three onwards. What's Morphling doing? Decently, but so is death. Like this Pangolier is really the big question mark here. It's always this hero is very hit or miss, right? Like either you're owning a game or you're not having very much impact at all. And it doesn't really strike me as a death hero. Like I haven't seen him play it a whole lot. Yeah, not. I mean, speaking of Polno, he obviously knows him well. Uh, his fellow Singaporean uh, did yeah, not really mention his message. Pango too much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me, let me get you all the info. <laughs> no. Hey, Polno, um, Dev, Pango, you how? It's something smart to say that I can steal. I was messing him before the series. I was like, all right, I need to sound smart when I'm casting. What, what have you got? Um, but all he got. Oh, what he did tell me was last time Death played PI qualifiers with him, they got last place. That, that's what I got. <laughs> Oh, that so. is a great information. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> he was like, yeah, we played TI Calls and Resurgence, got last place. Uh, hopefully he does better here. Well, I mean, he already has yeah. done better here. Um, yeah. I, mean, I, I saw that qualifier was a little bit of a rough ride for them. Yeah. It was yeah, a Singapore-only team, which just can't work. They don't have enough players over there. I know that feeling as an Australian. <laughs> we, oh, yeah. It's like, we got, a, we got a couple <laughs> good players, but we definitely don't have five. <laughs> yeah. But the ones you do have, they're very successful. Yeah. This will be one of the first years in a while without an Australian at TI, unfortunately, with Anna's retirement and KP not making it. So, sad That's sad right, days yeah. for, for Aussie Dota. Okay, there's always a next year. That's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> <laughs> As you cast Dota. Here we go. Bottom lane, yeah. Tim's in trouble. The fire's first this time around. Level two. Nice. They're going to go down. And yeah, mid lane, a very bit of pressure coming out from Chuan on the death rock playing behind the tower, Armel. So he gets that level 6, has to maybe be a bit careful here. Yeah, and we can also see why Shaman is not Ooh. really picked TP. a whole lot. Oh, just for the bottom range. refill? Uh, he didn't get it, I think. No, he didn't get he didn't. it. Armel put it too late. Oh. And he almost, he took a lot of damage from another Crypt Storm as well. And he's got a bounty he's rune on the Death Prophet to fall back to. So yeah, he's going to go back to base. Death Prophet doesn't have to go for the rune yet, it's just going to pop a Clarity. This is really bad news. Like, Terrorblade is generally a hero you want to hold lane. Going in on more. Gabby. How did he die? They got hex. First hike into Swashbuckle. And the, yeah, the hex. They just chain stunned him from the trees, and Death just jumped in with the Swashbuckle. The over really bad news. timing? Maybe catching him by surprise? I don't know. Potentially. But look at the gold. It's already 2k. They're winning all three lanes right now. Like, Terrorblade is a hero you want to beat in lane, he's got jungle, right? But if he wins lane, it's just a snowball hero that farms faster than almost anybody in the game. And he's having a good old time. All three of them are. Is this supposed to happen? Is this why no one picked Shaman? Because his hero is kind yeah. of weak? Or okay. it's, it's not like they're playing ter Terrible well. laner. I mean, he has a good base damage, it's just his mobility is so limited. And after the Aether Shock, what does he have? Like, Phoenix just out-trades him. He can't move. And it's just... Phoenix has line. mobility, so Phoenix can get on yeah. top of you with the dive. And we saw mm -hmm. even from the start, TP was spamming level 1 reflection for Harass, so just doing everything yeah. they can to bully him. TP is not the same old weak laner anymore with this uh, reflection buff he received. It's actually a decent spell. It deals 100 damage every time you use it. Good yeah. movement slow for your support to hit him even more. It's a strong hero now. That's why it's picked so much. Yeah. Alright, well, this is the start Fnatic we're hoping for. They had it at least somewhat in game two. I feel like this is an even bigger laning victory for them. So we'll see if there's going to be any kind of a response. As bottom lane, they're going to force the Phoenix to dive away. The chase is on Tim's. Trying to bring him down. It's going to be Boomy elsewhere dying as Tim's gets back to the trees. That was a another kill top for Fnatic. Yeah. And Morphling already relegated to the jungle. And not a good feeling. Course, That's where you want to have Mor Terrorblade, not Morphling. <laughs> yeah. Every time Morph is bigger, you also, have, I feel like, have to look a bit at the, the ulti combos. Like, is there somebody he can kind of turn into that's going to have a big impact? There is, what, the Metamorphosis is the big one this game? Is there anything else that yeah. stands out for you? Potentially the Lion. Like, if you get a good Impale Hex on, like, a DP or something, it would be pretty impactful. But you also have to be careful, of course, if you turn into the Lion, he's right next to you, and you don't get Hexed yeah. and Impaled. Good rotation from Armel. They needed something. Gotta open the map up. Farming the stack as well. It's a big stack. 
Yeah, I imagine that's why the Cole was like, come for this kill. Even if he dives and gets away, you can take a stack and push this tower, so... A good move regardless. Fnatic make a similar one up top. They rotate with the Exorcism, will take a tier 1 tower of their own, and Exorcism still running. They're going to TP mid and pressure this mid tier 1. They may, they probably don't get this tower, but they can get some good damage in. They have meta as well. Maybe they do get this tower, we'll see. TNC are going to have to come and defend this. They popped the Glyph already. Can they get in here in time? Fine, get the double damage rune. Yeah, they want to fight this one, it looks like. Fine does not want to stay. Oh, ooh, very close for a Hex there. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, he's struggling quite a bit on Tim's. Who we said is going to be the only source of initiation. That Swashbuckle is just half of Morph's health when he's on low. He has a Javelin, right? Yeah. Yeah. Going to from now first. Courier. Yeah. Did lose his career. Not a big deal, though. As Fnatic will see the gold lead reduced. The less track farming that stack and getting the bottom tower does put Armel actually on top again. So TNC to doing catch a good job. Theja here that could be a big one as well, but they have a ward. He's sitting right on top of it. Not happening. Unless Armel can hit a spinner. No. TJ just min maxing, getting as much farm and XP as he can, even with the knowledge that those heroes are there. Ow, ow. So he's like, uh, Tim's just gonna sentry. I, I think Tim's realizes, like, yeah, he's kind of playing like he doesn't see us, but he's also playing like he does see us, so. Yeah. An experienced support player will see that in a matter of seconds. Yeah, Armel still keeping it top of the network for now. It's a little bit scary to fight into these heroes, though. We said many times how strong DP and TB are against Leshra, because you gotta run in close and personal. That's where they want you to be in order to beat you up. Yeah. Higher Radiant team fight. It's like four big kind of wombo combo ultimates, or well, maybe less so the Metamorphosis, and then even Lion offering a lot of disables. But yeah, to respect the team fight. Yeah, and Death just making the top lane his new home. Well, still yep. home, I guess. Not really new home. He almost uh, has a melt from the very farmed on the Pangolier. I like how he's Off playing this game. Yeah, just taking this top lane. If the TP needed this top lane, he should give it up. If, like, I imagine he would have left if Raven was having a bad game, but Raven's just been free farming down bottom as well as at the Ancient Triangle. So he'll give up the lane now to TP, but getting all this farm is going to allow him to have a really nice game. Yeah, and we have yet to see a Brew split. He's headed for a good three minutes, but no chance to use it just yet. Maybe the top gets wave on Dom, but there's no real follow up. No, nope. and Exorcism popped in the mid lane. What's the defense they can mount? Primal Split is the big one that probably has to be committed if they want to defend this one. Chuan just throws out a casual silence to kind of deter them. ENC. Finger. Find their Brewmaster in trouble. The Finger blows him up before it can ultimate. And they've got the Rolling Thunder follow up. They're going to catch Tims now as well on the Shaman. He death kind of traps himself a little bit, unfortunately. Doesn't get the sun he was hoping for, and that puts Schwan in a bit of trouble in the death prop, but he needs to start healing up. Lashrock damage, though. Exorcism Hill coming in, but it's going to be too late. We he hasted Lashrock, doing so much work. Oh. He has Phoenix yep. Egg. And he gets down to the low ground. He gets out of there, dodges the split earth. Well Unfortunately played. for death, he just didn't get the bounces he was hoping for. Shaman kind of positioned near the wall, meant that he could avoid the rolling thunder. Yeah, Raven getting very low at the ancients. Be careful. But you're terrible, so who cares? He's got possessed mask. Oh, oh just thunder me, alright. DJ team now. player. Nope. <laughs> oh. How is camper. Uh, Gabby looking? He's actually ahead of Terrorblade and farm after this pretty bad laning phase. And yeah, gold lead back to pretty much zero. Wondering how that fight started. I'm surprised TNC won it. Um, yeah, Hasted Leshrug is really strong, though. Like, it's probably the best rune he can have. May just and take a mid tier on tower. This level 4 Edict with the Abaddon backing up Armel. Split. He's able just to run in. Yep. Death is the target. He's got a rolling thunder, but I don't imagine he wants to commit. He's just going to swashbuckle away. Huh. Sure about this split here. TNC perhaps yeah, crossing wires a bit. Split. It's fine. They get the tower, they disengage, but that should also mean. The Radiant can get the mid tier 1 tower as well. Yeah, they're probably hoping not to have to commit the Exorcism. It's already low. 
Mai just up on the Brewmaster, so going for the Mai's before the Ags is... We'll see what Fnatic's play is going to be with the Brew split down. Yeah. Kind of no, 1k made. lead of Fnatic. They basically made up 3k gold in 4 minutes. Very efficient map movement. And Lion is farming his blink. Yeah. Oh, he Lion caught the Lion. Into a backup in the Death Prophet nearby, but the Lion is going to get split. Out. The Silent, or the Hex are only coming out into one. The Revenge Kill should be there. Support for support. Lion for Lion, yeah. in a sense. Did force some rotations, though, to a lane where you don't really want to be at this point. But this mid tower is still standing. Yeah, I'm surprised. They're going to split. Like, now should be the time to strike. And Raven says, yep, it is. Should be pretty easy with this metamorphosis. They, have, they do have Glyph though. I mean, they can hold on to the X's for now, it seems. And they're not even rotating in the Death Prophet. They will Glyph it to delay things and look for a deny, it seems. Can Boomy time this? Uh, uh, he's pump faking they and they get it. it with the Brew. Okay. Raven tried to time it, but too many TNC heroes going for the deny. Yeah. And more the most out farming the TP though. now, by the way. Morph is, yeah, he is. Yeah. having a great game. I mean, look at Lesh though, 2k ahead of the enemy's Death Prophet. Wow. He's getting everything he wants. Yeah, what a... He might be setting up for DP oh, down no. there. With his Jules Scepter. The Prophet winning one more last creep. We'll get out of there, it looks like, safely. And Lesh will just come in to farm the wave, so... Neither team looking to make a play right now. Yep. Let's feel like Fnatic, who had that 2k gold lead coming out of the lanes, of not exactly found a way to capitalize on it. And if anything, it's the opposite. DJ could be in some trouble on the Phoenix. Runs into a Hex and actually gets the dive away. He's still alive for now. Yeah. And we'll Tim's need other, uh, he needs other heroes to play with him. It's like not the Abaddon Shaman that you're scared of, right? Like, it's not really a killer combo. Like, he needs to lash with him or more. Maybe even the Brewmaster. But, yeah, very close there for DJ. And he's gonna stay there with his Tranquil Boots. I think the, the low levels in Hex as well as Shackles means the Disables aren't really kicking in yet for the Shaman. He's gonna need yeah. more levels for it. It's a very different skill, but than we usually see from uh, when China picked it up a lot. They went like one, two levels max in the Shock and just maxed Hex and Shackles. Wow, wow they oh, commit the Exorcism and they actually managed to bring him down. They commit, they throw everything. Finger of Death, all the Disables and an Exorcism. They killed the There was a line without Blink and he did not morph up. That means he must have gotten surprised by a Silence or so. Because I imagine oh. if he morphs up there, there's a decent chance he might live. Not a bad place to commit an Exorcism as well because the Tier 1 tower is there for them. If they want to go for that, yeah. it looks like they might trade. Exo is gone already, though. One. Yeah. And, they and Lesh is so much Fnatic faster than defend. DP. Yeah. I don't know if Lesh is expecting this one. Tim's is in the trees. He gets the Hex out first on the line. They both get the Hex out. And Shuan comes running in. The Aphotic Shield helping keep Armel alive. He's so going to have to run away from... Yeah, Meta TB. You got to maybe run away from him. But shuan has got nothing on the Death Prophet. He's going to find the Brewmaster split running at him. And Shuan in trouble. The Yule Scepter being used to dodge the Boulder Toss. That may just save Shuan's life. And now with the Rolling Thunder coming to play, Death is zoning these heroes away, but he's only got the Shadow Shaman. He needs to maybe address Armel. He gets to kill the Shaman. Can they stop Armel from getting these kills? Shuan has just juked them in the trees. This Death Prophet coming up big. Raven is dealing way too much damage. They need to disengage. Yeah, Adam gets yeah he juked well him while engaged. Raven was just putting in the pain. Oh. Yeah, Lesh was hunting so hard for this Death Prophet. Shuan, without an exorcism, without any mana, just baited them in. No, yep, stayed al alive forever. I mean, he's still alive, even. Did not even fall, and they did not get the tower. And it's a Bruce Brick committed. Sure, Meta is also down. But TNC was definitely looking for more there. Still holding the gold lead, though. Like, you don't yes. expect Terrorblade to ever be ahead in net worth against the Morphling. I mean, uh, vice versa. Morphling to be ahead against Terrorblade. He should be farming much faster. Yeah, Fnatic going for maybe some of these kind of team plays where they try and force these towers and they haven't been able to win the fights as successfully as TNC have until that one up top. That pulled them ahead a little, well, didn't pull them ahead in terms of goal, but at least in terms of the kills. 
And Raven now going to go back to focus on his own farm with some ancient stacks, but feels like whenever we've been looking, it's yeah, TNC, they're the ones farming stacks, and now they're the ones in the Roche Roche pit. pit. DJ scouted by this observer, what Boomy planted it while smoke, so they're not going to know maybe what's going on. A TB illusion could go in and scout this one, but I don't think they realize. They're just sneaking this. Yeah, they don't have the best Roche lineup either. But now the illusions are kind of running their way. No, I like it slowly, but then it's not being scouted. DJ could use the fire spirits here. Did they not? Nah, they're just not aware at all. Lashrak played a very yeah. smart too. It looked like he was just taking the rune and disengaging. They're and showing the brute master the top. They're showing Lashrak mid. It's same as last game. TNC. I mean, we mentioned how some of these SEA teams at times have been playing a little bit, maybe cautiously and scared. TNC, two games in a row, sneak a Roshan. That's not playing cautiously or scared. That's making bold decisions that you think can win you the game. And it did last game, and it put TNC in a great position this game. Yep, this morphing with Aegis could be the, the side in the next team fight. What are we looking at for item progression? Terrible, just finishes Manta. Oh, now he gets smoked up thought, in the enemy yeah. side of the map. It's an Abel on Tankin, though. He's got the borrowed time, so... If anything, TNC's care. like, all right, let's fight them. Another haste rune. That's away still as the Yule Scepter. Who's he going to look to go on? They initiate in with the Phoenix. Rolling Thunder to follow up from death, but there is going to be a Yule's near Baton. They'll cut their losses on TNC to stop the borrowed time. Just a support kill and several ultimates committed. Yeah, not a fight they were looking for at all. Good reveal from the smoke, though, by uh, a bat in there. Yeah, not too many strong items coming out. DP prioritizing his own game a little more, going into the travels rather than a fast BKB or Kaya Sanj. Leshrak is very strong. Oh, you said that? Oh, oh Tron with his off first. Leshrak didn't get the Yules in the stun. Now they're going to follow up with an Earth Spike. Jabs with linking in for this one. Has the Finger of Death. Is the damage going to be there? They got the Supernova on top of Armel. Armel trying to take his way through this, but even with the Hood, it's not enough. Jabs will pay the price. The Brewmaster split being used to make sure they get the Lion, but. The chase is on, they want Bok. His Earth Panda is on the run. I Ooh, believe he has it, no dead. Blink Dagger, so yeah, he's got no way out without a Blink Dagger. He's gonna go for the <laughs> TP, but wishful thinking. Yeah. No chance he makes it out of there. How close is his? Oh, he's only 50 gold away from, to his Agamon Scepter. On the Brewmaster, that means next team fight, there's gonna be two splits, which is gonna be very, very troublesome. Yeah. You can't really make this place without a Baden. Like, he needs to be behind the Lashrak. If he's there, he's gonna survive a whole lot longer. And even the Aegis Morph was off farming. Him. Like, they're trying to get this Morph yeah. E Blade up, so... Not Gabby's fault, he necessarily wasn't there. It's just the team who were not all on the same play page. Yeah. E Blade is done in a thousand. And we still got about two and a half minutes left on the Aegis. So it have like a decent timing, not the longest, but a timing nonetheless. Oh, came down bottom, they're looking for him. They get the sound. <laughs> Jabs guesses wrong. He's like, he's in the trees, but he just guessed the wrong tree cluster. And now they're looking to turn this one around. Fanatic, oh, I he misses Split though. Earth. Khan again, just juking these TNC spells. Jabs will get the blink out as well. Oh, they're breaking ankles out here, Black. Yeah. I'm not sure why Armel went for the stun before Yules. There was no reason to really. Probably thought he would get him, but yeah, gotta play it a little bit more safe because like he didn't need the Yules defensively there at all, since there weren't any enemy heroes around. But they will still get to the, the tower bottom. Are they trading for top though? Shaman can see can... TP. Yeah, I thought they were gonna go for the defense and said they're gonna just back off, take the outpost. Attic, we're a little scared that TNC were gonna come and defend this one, but now maybe realizing that's not the case. <laughs> they'll clear out the creeps and hope that maybe the Radiant Creep Wave can finish off the Tier 2 tower. Looks like... Be enough. They'll get no. it down to the Nye range at least. Maybe, yeah, if a TB Illusion or something was up there, they would have had it, but... They can clear another Creep Wave and slowly get it. Yeah. It's not, like, super important. The outposts don't give that much experience anymore as they used to. Maybe for Roshan, having the outpost to TP2 can, can matter, but... Yeah. No Roshan yet. Yeah, something you have to worry so 50 about. 50 seconds left on the Aegis. E is up. So you don't want to force anything with this. 
Doesn't and I think like we it. may see Fnatic go for... Well, I guess they're waiting on this Scotty Because often you see these teams smoke up when Aegis is expiring. But they are constantly being scouted out. This Dire Ward, they just smoked under it. PNC, they know this is coming. The question is, do they try and bait this and take a fight? It looks like they're at least considering that. Boomy on the high ground. The selfless support trying to tank this smoke gank. Gabby is TPing there too. They definitely want to fight this. Meanwhile, Shaman is the best initiation. Shaman may just drop wards down bottom. Yeah, one more creep until level 12. Ether shocks uh, and there's a TP. Uh oh, he may uh, get caught. He doesn't have a blink dagger himself. He's in the trees. Jabs has whoa! a hex. He just. Uh, oh, he got him! Oh, the last point one second. He'll I get think the finger stack as well. He would have lived. It's yes, yeah, level four hex. Maybe they can get. But here comes. Oh, a lion is out of position. He has better no lion than uh, than death prophet. Dab's trying to get his mana back. Will uh oh, uses the shadow amulet. That may save his life. Have they got detection? Split Earth with the lesser AOE damage should be enough. They're gonna throw out the Brewmaster split as well, but the rolling thunder comes through, pummeling this Lesh rack, getting the oh, back lines as well. The Abaddon gonna get hit by this one as well. The shotgun takes out the death prophet. The fall of damage from Raven's there, but the defensive fuels from the Lesh gonna keep him alive a little bit longer, but the Sunray will finish him off. What a rolling thunder from death! Absolutely wrecking the back lines. We'll take out the Abaddon, but they still maybe don't have the best sense for Gab, who's gonna be forced back because of the TB. Instead, it's DJ. On the Phoenix being chased down, this Brewmaster split with the Axe timing, causing a lot of problems here as TB tries to finish off the split. Won't be successful, nothing to cancel the TB. TP out. Whew. A bloodbath in this middle lane. It was kind of a three for three in the end since Shaman, I guess, died before the fight, but both yeah. teams using all their big ultis. Yeah, and Roshan responds, and potentially one and a half minutes. But who does... You just see this Terror Blade, he's untouched every fight. Like, they're just trying to ignore him, but he's outputting so much damage. And his Pangolier, they don't have an answer for him either. He... Like, they can't really stop the roll at all. And it's great because he's stunning everyone. So he stuns up the Leshrac and then he also hits the Abandon. So those shields and miscores are not saving people like you'd perhaps want them to be. Yeah, they definitely need BKBs to answer this. Pangolier here. Are they building into them? Yeah, Morph is, Lash is, and Brewmaster is going straight A on disc. I like that quite a bit. You just need to get off your splits. You mentioned the, the TB kind of being ignored and putting out all that damage. What did you see from Morphling that fight? Like, as far as we haven't seen much Morphling this tournament, is this looking like a game where Gabby's going to be able to carry things? Uh, I mean, the way he played it was really good. He turned into the lion, killed the lion, of course, and then he hexed the DP so he can't dual dodge his shotgun combo. Killed the DP, he did all the right things there. Just didn't end up being enough to win the team fight. But, I mean, he definitely knows what he's doing. Is he level 30 on Morphing? That's a pretty sick symbol. I, I think it's level 30. I believe that's the level 30. I've... Yeah, I think that's level 30. I mean, you could definitely tell. Like, the way he's doing yeah, his level spells. 30. Yeah, he instantly morphed back before he got stunned. And morphed up strength. He knows pretty much everything about the yeah. zero. In and out. That's that's a lot of games played. Yeah. Gabby. I wonder how many games it is actually. With a 2-0 lead, hundred. that's that's them saying, you know, you, you mentioned there didn't seem to be a better option than Morphling when we got to that last pick. And Gabby saw the same thing, so going for a comfort pick, even if it's an out of meta comfort pick. Yeah. And, and with a 2-0 lead, that's a good time to, to go for a pick like that. Yeah. I mean, a lot of players would just be like, nah, I don't want to play Morphling unless it's like a free Morphling game, you know? But Gabby is. He doesn't seem to be caring too much. Even in game two. It wasn't the perfect PA game, but he still made it work, no problem. Alright. Gabby has definitely shown up these qualifiers. Yeah, and he had to. A lot of strong competition. Yeah. Left yeah, feeling close to his BKB. Yeah. Is that I mean I mean you mentioned the rolling thunder. Is is that something that TNC is ready to go with? I mean, if they may have to be ready to go because Roche has respawned, so we'll see if either of these teams goes for it. Raven's in there. They may just come in next Yeah. And TNC's nowhere to be, to be seen. Careful. Yeah, this Roche is just dead. Yeah, no way they're fighting this. I mean, they sort of know, but it's too late already. I think yeah. Morph just wants to prioritize his own BKB. Because fighting into Rolling Thunder without BKB is so hard, especially with this Talon and Pango. It lasts for 13 seconds. It's ridiculous. 
Okay, they just give it up. It looks like they were TPing mid as if they might want to try and contest it, but that's not the case. That's and a cool. shot on DP. I liked it quite a bit. When you get Spirit Siphon for 4 seconds, you get feared. It can be pretty impactful against some of these heroes. Yep. Like a more also gives you one additional copy. charge, right? Yeah. yeah. Five charges. So, Fnatic, not going to see them immediately look to utilize this Aegis Cheese. They have to wait for the Exorcism cooldown as well as the meta. Oh, sorry, no meta. They didn't actually commit. It was just the Exorcism. Yep, didn't just the Exorcism. TB is ready to fight. 200 away from his BKB. And we didn't really talk much about it, but... Uh, TNC was leading by like 2k before that fight. And ever since then, they made up 7k gold, basically. Similar to last game with it going back and forth. Because this game was Fnatic who had the lead, like 2 3k gold out of the lanes, and then TNC swung it their way, and now it's back Fnatic's way. But it doesn't feel like either team is making the same kind of maybe overly aggressive throws as we saw a bit in game number two. Yeah. And this game is really going to come down to who gets the better initiation. They both have instant blink hexes, Shaman and Lion. I, I, this game is just going to be purely decided on who goes first yeah. and on what target. I hear that. And I'm hearing, I'm hearing we're going to see some Aeon Disc then. I already see a few queued up. <laughs> yep, yep. On Aeon cores every as game. well. You're playing against Hex as a core, you want Aeon Disc. Pango has one, Death yep. Prophet has one queued up. Oh. Yep. And also, uh, Brumast already Brumast has his has, as well. Yeah, Brumast has his, so. Yep, all these cores with, with Aeon Disc. Oh, oh, DJ, queued up Aeon Disc. <laughs> There's definitely something that will be done to this item. I'm not quite sure what, but a little too good. And by a little, I mean a lot. I, mean, I wouldn't mind. I like the concept of the item. It just seems too cheap. Like I imagine, even make the build up different, so it costs like an extra like thousand, fifteen hundred gold, and gives like some different stats maybe. Back then, I just don't like the concept it. of it reducing or basically removing all the damage. Like if it reduced it by like half. I would be on board with it, but it's basically a free blink out, a free everything. It's like a mini Oracle ulti, right? Tims. Raven has ages. Can they kill this guy? Well, not anymore. Morphing TP'd out already. Finished his BKB. I think he's happy to fight now. Just a question do you want to fight into a terrible at ages? It's not an easy fight. You mentioned these fights coming down to execution. Is there key target for either side, or like what kind of what is the execution that both teams are looking for to, to win these fights? I think the best targets to kill for TNC are definitely DP and Phoenix. I think it's going to be very hard to kill Def with his Aeon disc. So he's fishing. He's he's right next to Tim. Ooh, he they, they, they're breathing each other's air. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Six feet, like, guys. Where's Six that feet smell coming from. Yeah. That's not socially distant. We don't like that here. Yeah. And Jabs walks off. That's a bit better, Jabs. Yeah, thank you for abiding the law. DP is a little bit alone up there. But Shaman is nowhere near. And he's better than out. Okay. They need Shaman to set up for these kills. Otherwise, no chance. He was trying to bottom. But uh, Fnatic was just like, alright, we're pushing the whole lane with everybody. They found Shaman's Courier, which kind of reveals the fact of what he's doing, but they're going high ground. They say we're ready. Exorcism plus TB with an Aegis. It's time to go. They still have a couple minutes left on this Aegis, so... I want this tower. How hard did they want to commit? No meta has been no committed glitter. so far. Yeah, I'm surprised no glitch was used some time ago, so... TNC. Yeah. Have to find a way to defend this one. Gabby in the trees, trying to find an E-Blade target. There is an A on disc on Pangalier though, so Death can't really be blown up here. And it looks like Fnatic just gonna disengage. And with six, it's an Arcane Rune Death Prophet. That's why they threw this Exorcism. There will still be a window. They'll still have like a minute left on this Aegis when Exorcism is back up. Maybe more like 45, 50 right seconds. Yeah, they want to fight while it's down. I don't. I imagine they would have seen this Arcane Rune. Yeah, I know this I'm window sure is aware small. Of it. Well, this career flying over, that's going to kind of reveal where TNC are. The question is, do they want to go on to, from low ground to high ground? That seems incredibly risky. Bok is leading Ooh, the charge. Bok is going. 
Brewmaster gonna pop out of the smoke here, has the primal split, Fnatic, Death immediately throws out the Rolling Thunder, the Silence Fob is there, but Armel gets the BKB off, Death turns the Aeonis, can they blow up Bok? Nope, he gets off the primal split, Armel, he's dying to the meta TB, does TB have the damage with the Skadi, so he should be fine, the BKB gonna wear off soon, he might get thrown up in the air, the Spider Legs, Armel, he gets out of there, TB can't finish him off, Raven needs a Sun to target too, he's getting a bit low here, has got the Phoenix if he needs, it will take out Boomy, and the Lesh did end up getting chased down, they got three, they're looking yeah, for four, is Gabby in trouble on the walk, anything to stop his TP? No. He gets out, but they may get blocked now instead. He threw the second ultimate, even if they don't get him, he's got no primal splits left. Looks like he will get his way out of there. Ooh, yeah. It's just, we spoke about it during the draft, like fighting into these heroes is so incredibly difficult. You can't fight into a supernova. I met the Morphosis. There wasn't even Split. Exorcism. They just glyphed, and now they have Exorcism. There's no glyph for this one. This is going to be a lane of racks, it feels like. Yeah. 35 Actually, seconds without the ledge rack. TP Ido is pushing the mid tower. Yep. And they're just going to go All bigger right. right after this, I feel like. Keep being from Abaddon, but there we go. They'll get the full bottom lane. What's the call? Do they want to push their luck? I feel like they're having some slight flashbacks from last game. Like, uh, what happened last game when we went for a second lane? But no, no, it's, it's fine. Oh, wait, no, it's not. They're, they're thinking twice about this one, and they'll play it safe. I, I don't mind this black. Like I think they, like you say, they probably could have. But Aegis was expiring, no metamorphosis, and last game things went pretty south for them when they went for that second lane. Yeah, just wait for your cooldowns. You are super far ahead. There's no reason to risk anything. If anything, uh, TNC has to be the one making a risky play. But just prepare for that. Exorcism 90 seconds. Meta is going to be up by that time as well. Like the, the overwhelming amount of team fight on the Radiant side is just too much to deal with for the Dire. There's just nothing they can do, really. And that's what we kind of, yeah, hi highlighted in the draft when we saw some of these heroes. We're just like, I, there's some definitely some question marks about how TNC win a team fight. We haven't even really seen Supernova come into play because these team fights just end so quick. Ooh, that's how you win a team fight. You blow her up with an E Blade. TP goes down, dead for 75. Gabby's stuck in the woods, but we'll have a wave for him, so he's fine. Gabby's like, eh, I don't want to leave. I feel like Shaman should be able to deny the wards from full health. Yeah, or make one go into the ground so you can walk through and then back up again. <laughs> there you go. Shaman definitely needs something. I feel like this hero has not been changed ever, really. Yeah. I, I, the Is last change I remember this hero had was when Aethershock used to be single target, right? Like, way back when? Like, Dota 1 days, maybe? Yeah. And the constant buff to his base damage. That's not, that's not a change to the hero. I mean, like, I'm talking like, no. you know, a Oh, new you mean spell. like a fundamental change? Yeah. Like, a new... Oh, like, yeah. even his... His, his, like, his Ag is one of the... I mean, like, just most boring Ags in the game. So here we go, <laughs> Blink in bottom. They have the Finger of Death. They want to blow up this last strike. Stop him getting the BKB off. But he does get it out of the Yules, but the right-click damage is there. Raven blows and blows him up. They're doing this without the Death Prophet. They're just catching TNC by surprise. The Abaddon's trying to come in to save the day, but it's too late with the Lesh already dead. Raven BKB TP's out. And they just killed Lesh without Death Prophet. That was ballsy from Fnatic. In the enemy base as well. <laughs> yeah, it's not something you see every day, but they get out without losing anybody also. Yeah. So both mid laners going down in the end. And now DP. Arcane Rune again. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. For Fnatic at least. Beautiful. Go, oh, my. Persistence. I don't think it's beautiful. The Death Prophet does. I'm, not, I'm trying to be unbiased yeah, here. Yeah, of course, of course. We, we all there's know there's a DD thinking. outside the Roche Pit. It's like, oh yeah. So that, that person's happy, but. Beautiful. Not me. Not me, personally. Of course. You would never be happy. You're. You're very unbiased. At least you now, don't want you know, TNC to win without, because without of the compendium. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm biased, Black. I predicted TNC. I got to be able to brag that I predicted the right team. Yeah. Oh no. no. <laughs> That's the bragging that's rights so are always there. <laughs> what do we got? DJ has a ward. He's going to throw the sentry out first. Check that there's nothing on the high ground. Interesting that he did that. Uh, oh, he has a gem. <laughs> They could have just, I guess, dropped the gem on the, the ground for that flying vision, right? Yeah, but of course, he's getting a bit older, so... Fingers aren't where they know. used to be. Yeah. I he's the guy that's well. been on this Fnatic team the longest. He, since 
maybe like what? A couple of years. 16, right? 2007, maybe 2017. Yeah, longer, I want to say, like three or four years, right? Or not? Did he ever leave since he joined first? Oh, uh, maybe he took a break or something. I, that's a good question. Not, not up to date on my DJ history. Yep. He gets the more strength off, and it feels like death is just poking and prodding, fading out some spells. Yeah, I mean, Rolling Thunder is such a low cooldown. It doesn't really matter. It's going to look like a kind of nothing ultimate, but the one thing is Roche could have been coming up, but he's got a minute before they have to worry about Roche. And of course, Rolling Thunder for a potential Roche fight is always going to be huge. Yeah, one of the scariest abilities in the entire game. I'm just trying to see what like the game-breaking power spike could be for Morphling. He's got a Scardi now, it just doesn't feel like he can combat the Terror Blade at all during this like supernova exorcism flying around. There's just too much stuff going on that Morphling can't really focus anyone. A Daedalus TB, his damage output is getting out of control. Doesn't have the Satanic here, that's kind of more the defensive item, and he doesn't feel like he's ever needed this defensive item. He's yet to die and never really feels like he's any, in any danger of dying. 1.1 second Crypt Swarm cooldown. I'm, that. I'm like, what's going on here? How, does he have a <laughs> refresher? Like, I was like, this is, this is nuts. Both yeah, teams, the talent is pretty insane. Yeah. Both teams hovering around this Roshan pit. The TB Illusion gets to scout it, whereas TNC have a bit of a trickier time scouting Roche. They could be doing Roche soon because somebody has to go bottom and defend that lane. Yeah. Courtesy oh. of the Rex push, of course. And Fnatic's see oh. that, which is perhaps why they smoke now. They're looking for that jump. If Straight they the see pit. this Leshrac bottom, there is an outpost for Leshra TP2, but they're just going to look to probably take this with Exorcism. Maybe they'll want to hold on to these ultimates. They're probably saving it for a fight. Bok throws out the Cinder Brew. This has to be fast, fast. though. Be decisive. Yep. Going in, he gets silent, so he has got Neon Disc. They may just going to ignore him while they finish off the road. Nope, they won't Bok, but he does get up the split. Neon Disc saving Morphling the day for trouble. now. The Morphling is blowing up and up buyback. Oh no! TP gets hexed up, but this TP is a tanky fella. You're not bringing him down, and he's just going to focus the Roche. He needs to maybe deal with these Serpent Wards. You don't want to see Roshan get denied or I mean, or stolen or an Aegis denied or whatever it may be. So yeah, clear the Serpent Wards, then finish the Roche. And TNC, they're just getting the hell out of there. We're, we're starting to see why Morphling is perhaps not picked so much, it feels like Black. This was a free farm Morphling, but it's not doing much against the five-man teamfight lineup. Yeah, that's kind of what I was worried about. Picking Morph into line can easily end up like this because Morph always wants to wave in and shotgun someone, which means you're in prime position to get hexed by the line. That's what happened. He couldn't get off his BKB. And yeah, this game seems all but over. 30 seconds. No exorcism, though. So I guess there's some hope to defend the last lane at least. Yeah, Fnatic feeling like it's in a pretty good place. They're tipping their buddy Raven. He's the guy that TNC were tipping. The former TNC carry player played with them through numerous TIs. Is looking to get one back on his former teammates here. They are down 2-0. So this is just the first step of several for Fnatic if they want to make their way to the international. But first have to get this one game. Yeah, but it's about time though. Like, after these two defeats, they really need this win to boost morale as well. Cause... Yeah. I don't feel like it's going to demoralize TNC. I think draft-wise, TNC probably going to look at this and be like, yeah, we made some mistakes. Play-wise, you know, it wasn't our best game, wasn't our worst. But, um, like you say, morale-wise, this will definitely boost Fnatic up. Yeah. But if you just look at the chess game of draft, last game, TNC also lost that. They outplayed, but they can't be happy with the draft they've had. TNC trying to perhaps... Make something happen, they get the Hex out onto the Terra Blade. Maybe not the best target if they can't burst him down. Doesn't look like they've got the damage. The Rolling Thunder coming through, which is going to sun up Tim's on the Shadow Shaman. He's the one that was trying to lock down the TB, but they just had no damage at all. Shaman dead, Gabby getting sunned up. Morphling Death with the move. Rolling Thunder. This Tango is just wreaking havoc here. Gabby going to go for a roll-up play of his own, using the Morph. As he turns around with an E-Blade, but that does no damage at all to Jap. He's got the Aeon Disc to keep himself alive. Death with an Aeon Disc of his own. The Pengo is still surviving his way through this one. Armel's land. Doing some good pulse damage after the kid. Got the Phoenix. Trans Death Prophet has an Exorcism now. And this could spell trouble for TNC, who's now lost their morph. And they have to fight into an Exorcism. They need to get Armel out of here. Not sure they can. They've lost the line. It looks like Armel will just barely get back to safety. So, Fnatic don't perhaps get the team fight they were hoping for with the Exorcism. Don goes down as that'll kind of even things up at two kills apiece, but that exorcism was a very short-lived one. 
Yeah, a fight. I think you can't really ask for anything better if you're TNC with this gold disadvantage. And any trade that you take at this point is probably good for you. But it is terrible, it is just unstoppable. And it was without exorcism, as we said. Absolutely brutal. Terrorblade is 13k gold ahead of the Morphling. Ay, 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 ay. Morph is itemizing into an E-Blade. I know, sorry, a Swift Blink. The thing is, Morph is also a hero that can't build into Nullifier at all. While his entire kit is about bursting down heroes. You can't do that against Aeon. It's just not yeah. possible. We have seen there, he shotgunned the line. He was like, oh, alright, I gotta end this. I don't care. Things will slow down a bit now for, on the TNC side, but Fnatic may just be the high ground again. They've got yeah. to travel on Death Prop. They're playing around this top lane here. What can they find? It's a TP25 as well. So it's the meta attack range. Boom with a flicker and a bad. It's a great item. I'm surprised to see that it's, all, it's only a bad. Maybe not feeling like they've got a better target, and with the TP meta range, they're just going to be hitting this high ground from the low ground. Death Prophet TPs into the creeps. They force an A on this one, the brew. Now he's going to be careful when he initiates. May just have to use that primal split from afar. I'm not trying to clear out some illusions with the Pulse Nova Shiva Scar. They've got the Sunray heal. Find them some time. And the trees is the Morphling looking for a target. Raven just going to BKB. He gets the fear out onto the Leshrac as well. And with that, Leshrac, Armel, he can't be kept alive. He just melts. TP will lose his first Raven life died, though. No, no meta. Yeah, he's got no Nate. He's gonna be coming back without meta. There's gonna be a fear. Gabby with the stolen fear, looking to take out Raven. It looks like Raven will get four stuff back to safety. Gabby Smallfling doing some work here. Armor running in as well. This Leshrac doing so much damage. Raven uses the Sunder, turns this one around on the Morphling. Morphling is dead, but now there's no more Sunder and Armel on this Lesh has to get out of there with the spider legs. He's on his own, he's got a shield to try and bail him out here, but they've lost the Shaman as well, so no more control to play around as Armel, still on the rumble, finally get caught and chased down, that's four dead, and TNC are gonna call GG. We're going to a game four, not so easy, say Fnatic. Yeah, finally a sign of life. Ooh. Draft again, very good. Execution this time around was also very good. There was a time in the mid game where you thought maybe TNC can do it, but the team fight is just overwhelming. Ever since uh, TB got Scotty BKB, I think the game yeah. was just pretty much over. They could never find a good team fight. And yeah, well done Fnatic. Extending it to a four game series at minimum. And that's, you know, that's the free farming Gabby Morph, who's like the master tier level 30 Morph. And he's stealing every spell he can, trying to make all the plays and unable to carry that game. So probably won't see the Morphling again, I would expect. But a fantastic game three goes for next ways, which means this series is not over. So we're going to have to bring back a Nat as we get ourselves ready for game four. Guys, stick with us. It's going to be fantastic.